G'day guys, this is Mr. James Dunnan here and we're going to be going through natural selection today. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so let's imagine that we want more redheads in the world. Why would we want that? Well, it doesn't matter, but we're going to do it. I know it's crazy, but we're going to actually support the Rangers on this channel. So, we've got red-headed people in the world, we've got brunette people in the world, and we've got blonde people in the world. Okay? So we've got these three phenotypes. Red hair, brown hair, and blonde hair. But we want to reward the people that have red hair. So how can we do that? Well, let's say that for every family that has a red-headed child, we're going to give them one million dollars. Okay? So every family that has a red-headed child, we're going to give them one million dollars. Okay? If a family has a brown-haired child or a blonde-haired child, they're going to get nothing. Okay? So we're rewarding families that are having children with red hair because this is a genetic trait. This is passed on through families. Okay, so we've got a family. Let's put these aside for now. We've got a family. They have a red-headed child. Excellent. Here's a million dollars. They're happy. We've got another family. They have a brown-haired child. Oh, that's no good. What are they going to do with that child? They don't get a million dollars, they get no reward. So let's say that they actually get rid of that child. We're not going to ask questions, but they're going to get rid of them. So off they go. Now, because that brown-haired child never reaches an age where it can reproduce itself, or himself or herself, then they don't get to pass on those brown-haired genetics. Likewise, a family has a blonde-haired child, but they don't want that. So they're going to get rid of it. Off it goes. Another family, you know, maybe he breaks up with his partner to try and find another red-headed person because he wants that red-headed child. Red-headed child, one million dollars. And what we find is over time, we start to see more red-headed people. Okay? We still can see a blonde-haired individual and a brown-haired individual, because maybe they're born into a family that's already well off, they don't need the extra money. But lots of people are going to want that million dollars, so what we start to see is the red-headed children start to become more pronounced, or we start to see them more commonly, than these brown and blonde-haired children. What has this got to do with natural selection, you ask? Well, great, great question. In fact, this is natural selection itself. We have variation in the population. There's a characteristic that is rewarded somehow. There's a selective pressure. And therefore, those individuals with that advantage, that characteristic, have more of a chance to reproduce. They get to have sex. I'm not sure if I can say that on YouTube, but they get to have sex. They get to have children. And those children are more likely to have that genetic trait as well. So if they've got that genetic trait, they're going to have red hair, they're going to have the advantage and they're going to pass it on. And over time, what we see is the frequency of that characteristic increase in a population, that's natural selection. Once an organism has that, that specific trait that is rewarded, we start to see that so common that we think it must have been there all the time. And we call those adaptations. So adaptations are what organisms have, either structurally, uh, behavioural or functional, that makes them um, the most suited to their environment. Okay, but we can use any example that we want. So if I take these away, we could have this example here. So this is a, a lion chasing a gazelle. Okay, the lion has adaptations or beneficial traits that allow it to be suited to catching the gazelle. But just as likely, the gazelle has traits that make it more likely to get away from the lion. 
So over time we get this balance. So this is natural selection. Variation in population. Okay. Variation in population. Okay, so we've got to have that first. How do we get variation? Well, it comes down to mutation, firstly, especially if you're an asexual organism. You know, have a look at our website, anytimeeducation.com. You might find some other videos related to how do we get variation in population. But mutation is primary. And then if we don't have mutation, what we can do is we can have different gene combinations through um, fertilization, um, sort of independent assortment of chromosomes during meiosis, uh, crossing over during meiosis will all um, cause new gene combinations, which gives us variation in population, which is what we want. Then we need some kind of selective pressure. Okay, So we need some kind of selective pressure that will drive which variation in the population is the one that we want. Okay, Or which variation in the population is the one that's going to be the most beneficial to have. That's going to give those individuals in that population a reproductive advantage. And if they have that reproductive advantage, they're going to get to reproduce more often, they're going to get to pass that gene on, and that's going to cause an increased frequency of that allele in the population. Now, allele is just a word that means different combinations of basically the same gene. So the gene might be for eye color or hair color, or, you know, to put it simplistically, an allele is say brown hair, blonde hair, red hair. So they're the different combinations that code for the same thing. It's a very simplistic way. As the variation in population occurs and we start to change the frequency of those alleles, the total genes, the total genes of that particular population or that species is called the gene pool. Now I tried to Google a picture of gene pool and this is what I got. I don't know who these guys are, but it's saying gene pool shallow end. You know, I'll leave that with you, but I don't think you have to think too hard to work out what's going on there. Okay, so this is natural selection in a nutshell. Um, you know, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my channel. Check out anytimeeducation.com. And always stick around to the end of our videos because we like to put something a little bit special at the end. Thanks for watching. This is Mr. Dundon. Take it easy.